بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلا آلی وصحبہ وسلم مبار ایو لحبت فی اللہ Continuing on in our halakat, al-siyam, or our sittings regarding fasting and some of the benefits and some of the fiqh and some of the wisdom behind fasting and the manners we should try to observe. And from the maqasid al-siyam, or from the purpose <coughs> or intent behind fasting, one of the things, of course, as we mentioned on countless occasions, is taqwa Allah جل, is that we gain taqwa, we gain uh, God consciousness, that we become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearful of His punishment and hopeful for His reward subhanahu wa ta'ala by avoiding those things which He has prohibited and doing those things He has uh, commanded. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this regard has said, subhana fi kitabi al kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have prescribed for you fasting. Similar to the way we have prescribed fasting for those who came before you in order that you would gain taqwa. This is in order that you gain taqwa Allah azza wa jal. That you will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you will do the things He has commanded and you will avoid His prohibitions. Another maqasid or intent behind uh, fasting is that fasting helps us to control and refine our desires, so to speak. That a person is controlling their desires during the holy month of Ramadan. They're not eating, they're not drinking, and they're not having sexual relations with their lawful spouse, if they have one. All those things which we desire, those things which are uh, uh, that, those things which we have desires for and we, we want and we, we enjoy. And Ramadan helps us to control those things, put those things in perspective. <clears throat> and I personally find that there's so much baraka in my time during Ramadan, if I'm using it, of course, to read the Qur'an and I'm uh, uh, revising ilm or teaching ilm or something, uh, going back over Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or reading the Kalam and the, uh, uh, of the Salaf of this Ummah or the Ulama of this day who to Mesik be had a minhaj, that we find there's blessings in our day. Because you no longer have to get up and worry about eating. You no longer have to uh, prepare your food and spend so much time ar around fulfilling your desires, but instead your time is precious. You're trying to get the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're using it in those things which will benefit you. And you just find barakah in that. I find barakah in that. Min fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another muqasid of siyam or, uh, is that fasting, it is also a type of tarbiya uh, with regards to our khuluq, with regards to our uh, manners and the way uh, that we interact with others and the way we interact with ourselves. And this is due to the fact that fasting, it encourages you to avoid those things which you ordinarily might fall into, which are sinful, like backbiting and namima, you know, spreading wickedness uh, throughout the community or lying or something like this. But during Ramadan, you're especially cautious about those harms of the tongue. And as the Prophet وسلم, said, There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the mu'min on the day of judgment than uh, righteous uh, manners. 
And verily, verily, Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So, if we can, we need to apply this throughout all the days of our life, but especially during Ramadan. <coughs> Ramadan helps you, Ahabatifillah, to begin to implement those those righteous mannerisms into your daily life during Ramadan and outside of Ramadan it can help you it's training you so to speak to where it can become a habit bi'idhnillah to do uh, righteous deeds and, and, and be kind and gentle watching your tongue not being quick to be, become angry not uh, being quick to uh, uh, speak in a uh, aggressive manner. And Ahabakifillah, this training is imperative for the believer. And perhaps I'm going to go a bit off topic, but I was just watching something which was uh, very beneficial. Uh, it, it was bad in some senses, but it was beneficial in others. There was, it was actually a, a video of some of, two, uh, of some individuals who were fighting, a street fight. And before the fight began, one of the individuals was talking very aggressively. And he was outnumbered, in fact, but he was talking very aggressively and cursing and speaking so foul, the kind of speech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. The other guys were also aggressive and were also exhibiting their prejudice. And then... They went to blows, they fought, and someone was getting this on their phone, and it was a very bad street fight. And the one individual was beaten so badly that he appeared uh, so stunned after the fight, just like he was, he was just in a daze and, and bloodied, and, and it, was, it was really bad. But it made me reflect also on the importance of watching the tongue. And there were two commentators about this fight, two people who are well known, they are uh, experienced champions in jiu-jitsu, their whole family, and they were commenting about this fight. And they were talking about how the martial arts and those things, how they discipline the character. This is what Islam does for you. This is what Ramadan helps you to do, to discipline and refine your character. So you can find some of those positive attributes sometimes in other arts as we said, martial arts and things like this, to not be the one who talks all that smack and then gets smacked down. But in fact, restrain yourself. Sometimes, and this goes in accordance with the sunnah, that sometimes when we strain our tongue and when we strain our anger, as the Prophet ﷺ said, La taqdam, and he said it three times, that you see that when the person who has not become angry, who can control themselves better, they can beat the person sometimes without physically going to blows. And then sometimes if it requires that because they didn't waste all their energy talking a lot of smack, maybe they handled their business and beat the person physically and restrained them, restrained that evil, restrained that harm. So it, 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 these types of attributes are things we want to work on uh, during Ramadan, controlling the tongue, controlling your anger, avoiding conflict. Another uh, Maqasid al-Siyam is that fasting, it is a uh, junna. It's a shield against uh, wicked manners and a shield against the punishment. And we've already spoken a bit about that. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ala adulaka ala abwaab al-khayr as-sawm junna. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Should I tell you about the doors of goodness and then he said fasting is a shield Ahabatifillah the ulama they mentioned like Ibn Rajib rahimahullah ta'ala about fasting and how it encourages patience and that Ramadan is the the month of patience and with regards to this the types of patience they mention are three Sabr ala ta'atillah Sabr ala muharamillah wa sabr ala aqdarillah Ahabatifillah uh, the first type is patience with regards to obedience to Allah that you're patient by fulfilling the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the second type of patience is sabr ala muharamillah or ma'asiyatillah in that you're patient by avoiding those sin, the sinfulness 
uh, uh, sinfulness, the, the, the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This requires a type of patience in, as well in refraining from doing haram. And being patient with the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Things don't always go our way. Sometimes we experience death in our families. We experience sickness. We go through sickness. We go through ailment. We go through trials and tribulations. We go through divorce. We go through rotten marriages. We go through getting beat up. We go through all kinds of things in our lives. Pain and suffering. And with that in realizing with ilm and fiqh, knowing that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and being patient with that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you relief from that difficulty and that trial, and that you actualize tawheed, and you actualize patience on the uh, the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, one of the other maqasid uh, al is that it helps the Muslim to empathize and have mercy for those people who have less than them, for the fuqara and the musaqeen. And also I want to encourage myself and my brothers and sisters to spend in charity. Get that extra blessing during Ramadan. Outside of Ramadan, but inside of Ramadan. Use your, your wealth. Send it to Muslims that need, need it in other countries. They need it in Bangladesh. They need it in Pakistan. They need it in India. They need it in Central African Republic. They need it in Ethiopia. They need it in Somalia and, and all over the world. Indonesia. And they need it, of course, in Syria. And they need it in America as well. So don't forget your brothers and sisters that may need, may need assistance paying a light bill or, or, or whatever right there in America or right there in uh, the UK or right there in Canada or wherever you may be. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.